这是 Anchorage 的 Airport， 我们正准备搭机飞往 Fairbanks。我们现在 Terminal C n 等待飞机。Anchorage 是一个蛮 beautiful 的 city， 我们玩两天来，我们三天两夜，我们玩得非常愉快，住得也很舒服。这个是个小飞机哈，我们现在从 Anchorage 的 Airport 将要 transfer 到 Fairbanks， 啊，这个飞行的距离大概是一个小时而已。In early 30s, they developed a system where if they pumped water out of the river and transported it to the mine sites, they could make use of it to save a lot of backbreaking pick and shovel work. So this building coming up on the right is still known as the pump house. It doesn't pump water anymore; just a lot of beer after three o'clock. But take a look at the lamp posts over there. Those are old mining nozzles. The actual pieces of equipment that did that work. An oversized pressure washer is what this was. And they withdrew 6,000 gallons an hour out of this river, pipelined it up over the hill and down into the next valley over, which we know as the Esther Cripple Creek Valley. Very rich gold ground. In fact, the water was able to recycle, so the Chena didn't、uh, didn't run out of water, and it came back in through a little 10-mile creek. Now, right at the end of the rocky beach on the hard right, there's a hole in the bushes. That's the mouth. Because if we can't solve any problem you're having this morning, we have been highly trained to sympathize with you. But it's going to work out. It's going to work out just fine. For hundreds of generations, the fact that every spring three species of North Pacific salmon pop out of eggs no bigger than your thumbnail, hundred miles up the Chena in the shallows where they've rested all winter. The little salmon live in fresh water for two years, and then they migrate. They come down the Chena, take a left into the Tanana. That muddy water doesn't hurt them, doesn't kill them. That rock is so soft they can live in it. They they run all the way down to the Yukon River and then a thousand miles to the Bering Sea, and they live out there five to seven years, and then they come home. Now, about three days ago, a 28-pound male silver salmon busted out of the salt water and went right into the end of the Yukon River. And tripped a sonar beam along with millions of his brothers and sisters and cousins, so we know he's coming. They'll be in the、uh, muddy glacial water about 20 days. This will be the last run, probably, to the silvers. By the time he gets here, he'll weigh half of what he weighed when he came out of the ocean, and that's why they die at the end of the run. They literally use themselves up to get back home. He's got one more task in his life, and that's to fertilize 1,500 eggs that a female laid up here in the shallows. They will both die. Plankton in the shallow water will eat them up very quickly, and then next spring when those eggs hatch, the, the eggs hatch, they will eat the plankton that ate their parents. They wiggle down into a box on the side. The guys come over and clean the box out regularly, and and then the salmon are taken to shore and prepared for either canine or human nutrition. Now Miss Haley is with us here as we as we alluded to coming down, and she's going to share a little bit of her memories of, of fish camp life. Been a big part of her life and. We're anxious to hear what she has to say. So, Haley, good morning, and Nanda Donia, thanks for being here. Sure, hi, hello, welcome to the fish camp here on shore today. My name is Haley, but my family is from McGraw, which is a village down in southwest Alaska along the Kuskokwim River. Fish camps like this one are still very common here in this part of Alaska, and harvesting salmon is still a very important part of life for my family. Well, now you'll have to forgive us. We're from out of town, so. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about some of these structures? Yes, I'd love to. If you take a look in front of you in the water, you can see the fish wheel. This is the main focus of an Athabascan fish camp, and it's a very efficient way of harvesting a large number of salmon during the short summers that we have here. In the far corner of the campsite, you can see canvas wall tents. These are what families will sleep in at fish camp. 
people are actually really comfortable. On a chilly day like today, we'd probably build a fire inside. Next to be on shore. 